the Truman Foundation is proud to present the 2019 Harry S. Truman Good Neighbor Award to Senator Claire McCaskill. Well, um, thank you to Carl and to the board, and especially to my friends, Bobby Epstein and Kevin Pastilli, for your support of this important organization. A special welcome to all the young students that are here, especially all of you that are here from across the globe. We are happy to have you here, not just at the Muehlbach Hotel, but also in the United States of America. And I hope you send that message home. You all need to get ready. Your moment of leadership is just around the corner, and we're going to need it. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to adequately explain what this award means to me. In the winter of 1978, I would walk down the steep hill behind the plaza from my two-room apartment to catch the bus to go to work at the Jackson County Courthouse. I was a brand new lawyer and I had a very small job at the Court of Appeals, but there was a spring in my step, an optimism and ambition in my heart because I had the pleasure of walking into Harry Truman's courthouse every single day. You see, I had consumed his memoirs as a high school student and it was already embarrassing what a fangirl I was of President Truman. For as long as I can remember, he has been my role model. He has been my gold standard. That young lawyer who was on that bus because she couldn't afford the parking space downtown had big dreams. But I never dreamt I would be standing here receiving this incredible honor among the company of the prior recipients of this award. It is astounding. I only wish my mom and dad were here because they loved Harry just as much as I did. But to adequately thank you today, I must take a page out of Harry Truman's book and not talk about me or my career. He wasn't that good at talking about himself. And while I confess that has never been my problem, <laughs> I am going to follow his example today. It was his character. That's what made him great. Like his personality, his character was simple and straightforward. But as our current president is showing, it's not as easy as it looks. There are a few fundamental parts of Harry Truman's character that everyone should try to live by. Let's start with truth. Truth. That's not complicated. He believed in telling the truth. This one is especially timely. We can only imagine what Harry Truman would say about the current occupancy at the Oval Office. Here's what he said about Richard Nixon. And for the young people, I usually don't talk this way, but I'm quoting Harry Truman. Richard Nixon is a no good lying bastard. He can lie out of both sides of his mouth at the same time and if he ever caught himself telling the truth, he'd lie just to keep his hand in. <laughs> Harry Truman told the truth, even when it hurt. And as he most famously said, I never gave anybody hell. I just told the truth, and they thought it was hell. Humility. So many examples that demonstrate his humility. From the beginning of his career until he was laid to rest at the Truman Library that we're all so proud of. One of my very favorite stories about his humility was after he was president. And of course it is amazing when you really study what Harry Truman did after he was president. Uh, how humble he was. How grounded he was. How normal he always was. But it was June of 1954 and they had contacted him 
uh, as the former president here in Kansas City to make a cameo appearance at the Starlight. Uh, a, a play was being presented, a musical, where there was a role for Harry Truman in the final act. And the pro producers thought it'd be really funny if Harry Truman showed up as himself. And always looking for an opportunity to get near music, uh, Harry Truman said, I'll be happy to do it. So he went out and for one of the few times in his life got very ill before he made his appearance on the stage. He w they took him to research and the next day they removed his gallbladder and his appendix. Uh, Dr. Wallace was on hand as he was throughout his life to minister to Harry Truman. There was a heat wave that June. I know we're all shocked to hear that in Kansas City. And Research Hospital had no air conditioning. He got an infection and remained hospitalized for a number of days. The temperature was ranging between 110 and 114 degrees on the temperature gauge outside of his hospital window. The director of the hospital came to his room and said, Mr. President, we would like to install an air conditioner for you in this room. And President Truman said, no, I don't want anything the others don't have. Can you imagine? One example of hundreds I could give, but there are so many others. He didn't want his name in lights. He didn't long for power or for money. He just wanted to do his best and to try to do the right thing. Without self-promotion, with humility and plain speech, he was constantly underestimated by friends and foes. He had the confidence of a well-educated man with no formal education. Hard work. He was so proud to call himself a farmer because in these parts, farmer means hard work. He only knew hard work. His pace was hard for his younger aides to keep up with. Even after the presidency, he worked every day whether he was campaigning across the country for Democrats, traveling the world, planning and funding the library, he kept up a torrid pace. Kansas City had a front row seat to witness the work ethic of a man that never embraced leisure, unless it was a small glass of bourbon and some poker. Once the library opened, he did not pause. Working at the library for nine straight years, Almost without exception, except when he had to travel, he worked six and a half days a week, nine hours a day. As David McCullough explained in his award-winning biography of Truman, which by the way, every departing member of my staff for 12 years got a copy of as they left my office. This is what McCullough explained in the book about Harry's work ethic, even as he was situated at the Truman Library in Independence. He was always on the job early, some mornings at his desk before the staff had even arrived. He would answer the phone himself, telling callers what the library hours were. <laughs> or in reply to further questions, saying that he knew because it was his library. <laughs> he would tell callers, this is the old man himself. Courage, especially courage to do the unpopular. And if there's any characteristic of Harry Truman, it's this that we all should admire most, especially as we look at our democracy today and the challenges we face. President Truman said, I wonder how far Moses would have gone if he'd taken a poll in Egypt. What would Jesus Christ have preached if he'd taken a poll in Israel? It isn't polls or public opinion of the moment that counts. It's right and wrong. Firing MacArthur, recognizing Israel as a state, the Marshall Plan, I could go on and on and on with decisions that Harry Truman made that were unpopular. No better example of ignoring polls and doing the right thing was his bold and wildly unpopular move to integrate the military. It was an exclamation mark 
on his evolution from a Southern sympathizer to an equality champion. And it was even more notable, now think about this, it was even more notable because of when he did it. He was running for office in 1948, and need I remind you that nobody thought he could win. I know that feeling. <laughs> nobody thought he could win. He was the accidental president. The polling was terrible for his reelection. His approval ratings were terrible. Uh, you know, the, the, all of the political pundits said he's dead. They even quit polling at the end of the election because everyone was so confident that Dewey was going to win the election. So what does he do in July of 1948, a few months before the election? He issues an executive order to integrate the armed services something that was wildly unpopular in the country at that moment in time. It was the right thing to do. He also spoke out as president against other race-based transgressions. As McCall explained one incident, on an August morning at Blair House where he was living because the White House was being completely redone under his direction. The road builder from Jackson County decided to shore up the interior of the White House in the right way. Uh, when he was at Blair House one morning, he read in the papers that a body of an American soldier killed in action in Korea, Sergeant John Rice, had been brought home for burial in Sioux City, Iowa. But at the last moment, as the casket was being lowered into the grave, the officials of the Sioux City Memorial Cemetery had stopped the burial because Sergeant Rice, a Winnebago Indian, was not a member of the Caucasian race. Burial was denied at the cemetery. And his wife was told to take his remains and leave. Outraged when Truman read this, he picked up the phone within minutes via telephone and telegram. It was arranged that Sergeant Rice would be buried in the Arlington National Cemetery between two generals with full military honors, and an Air Force plane was on its way to pick up the widow, three children, and the sergeant's remains to come to Washington. Harry Truman said as president that was the least he could do. Unlike today, he proudly claimed the title of politician. He liked and respected politicians. And he wasn't ashamed to be one. So let me just say, as I ch try to channel Harry Truman, I have been proud to be a politician for decades. It is important that the people who put, them out, put themselves out in public for acceptance or rejection not always be treated with respect because sometimes they don't deserve it, but many times they do, and Harry Truman got that part. Finally, and probably most importantly, Harry Truman understood an important fundamental in life, friends. He always had close friends. Whether it was the boys from Battery D or the friends he made while he was bending a knee to Tom Pendergast in this very hotel, he made friends. From the ward healers in Kansas City to the powerful around the world, he wanted to make friends. He understood what it, mean to, what it meant to be a friend, and he understood the value of friendship, both with people and the nations they represent. I know when he came to Washington, he's credited, and I'm not sure it's accurate. The library will have to tell me. He was credited with saying, if you want a friend in Washington, get a dog. But truthfully, Harry Truman had many, many friends, close friends that he treasured throughout his life. He was loyal, sometimes to a fault. He was slow to act when his friends abused his friendship when he was in a position of power. He always understood the value of friendship, and he nurtured and cared for those friends. Notes, calls, letters, he was thoughtful. He made time for his friends even when he had none. He looked forward to coming home as a citizen after being the most powerful man in the world, partially because he stayed grounded by his family and friends. 
He enjoyed his daily walks to the square where he could greet strangers and friends alike. One of the reasons he was so comfortable leaving an office where the world revolves around you and coming back to live in a very modest home in Independence because he knew what was important, family and friends. His example helped guide me through my almost 40 years in public service how blessed I am to have made so many friends along the way. And this particular room is full of them. People who have held my hand through tragedy and triumph, people who have been there to lift me up when I was lower than a snake's belly, you, my friends, and my amazing family have made me happy and secure. And like Harry, I couldn't be more content to be a private citizen again. I can name a number of elected officials who after retirement were lonely and unhappy because those elected officials did not bother while bathed in the intoxicating light of power and public attention, forgot to make and keep friends. The ultimate good neighbor is a friend. So once again, channeling my favorite president, call a friend tonight that you haven't talked to in a while and say you're doing it because the best good neighbor is a friend that remembers friends. God bless you all and thank you for this honor.